Some buildings have it all. Looks, pedigree, star power. Soaring towers that evoke the Acropolis, grand apartments with stunning views, and a who's who list of residents. The San Remo resides at the nexus of fame and architecture. The list of celebrities who have called the San Remo home reads like the guest list at a Swifty Lazar Oscar party. Rita Hayworth, Steve Martin, Glenn Close, Dustin Hoffman, Bruce Willis, Demi Moore, Bono, Steven Spielberg. In the late 70s, Warren Beatty slept at the San Remo, although he never actually owned an apartment in the building. Beatty dated two San Remo residents, Diane Keaton and Mary Tyler Moore, at the same time. Presumably, the Oscar-winning Casanova shuttled between Keaton in the South Tower and Moore in the North, much to the consternation of both leading ladies. Designed by Emery Roth at the end of the Roaring Twenties, the San Remo sits astride Central Park West from 74th to 75th Street. The lower floor apartments were designed as palatial homes, but it is the building's towers that set it apart. Rising 28 stories above the Manhattan skyline, they were inspired by the choragic monument of Lysocrates from Athens. The North Tower has just one apartment on each floor. The South Tower was meant to be even grander, 6,000 square foot duplexes, each with four bedrooms, a library, and living rooms with spiral staircases overlooking Central Park. Construction began just days before the stock market crash of 1929. The luxury market evaporated, and for the better part of the Depression, more than a quarter of the San Remo sat vacant, and both the building and the bank that held its mortgage fell into bankruptcy. In one haunting image, Diane Arbus, who lived here as a child, remembered looking out her window and seeing Central Park overrun by shanties. In fact, it is only recently that Roth's vision was fully realized. In 1982, Steve Jobs bought an apartment on the 27th floor of the North Tower and had it renovated under the direction of I.M. Pei. Jobs never lived there, and in 2003, he sold the pristine unit to Bono for $15 million. Recently, 80s rocker Billy Squire and Bono got into a very public dispute over Squire's third floor fireplace, Bono complained that smoke from fireplaces on the lower floors was entering his apartment, endangering his children's health. Mitch Miller, noted Columbia Records impresario, said, if people want fireplaces, let them go live in the country. The San Remo version of Let Them Eat Cake. 